Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our organization is to create a sustainable and self-sufficient planet that we describe as working for the highest good of all. We call this creating a new world paradigm in that we are simultaneously addressing all of the challenges of our generation and generations to come through open source and free shared plans, tools, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions to create complete self-sufficient and sustainable teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. And we're doing this because we believe that if we make it easy enough, if we make it attractive enough, if we make it affordable enough, which is why we are free sharing everything that we do, that we believe that these teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities can become self-replicating, spreading across the world and bringing the resources and the knowledge that's necessary to build a world that truly works for the highest good of all people, all life on this planet, sustainably, meaning in a way that will last forever and be able to adapt to the challenges that we have do not foresee yet. And simultaneously, as I've said, addressing all the challenges that we're working on right now, starvation, lack of energy, housing, crime, health, all these things. So this is our weekly update number 43, uh, where I'm going to cover everything that we've accomplished in the last week. If you'd like to see more information, visit our website and click on the One Community blog link up there, and you can see all of our previous weekly updates. There's additional pictures and images and, of course, links to all the open source and usable content that we're creating. Everything that we're doing is free shared without limitations of use, so anything that you find on there that's being designed specifically, we call it open source project launch blueprinting because it's designed not just as open source content where people can use it, but it's also designed specifically to launch additional projects. Our idea of a new world paradigm is a world that works for everybody, and so everything that we're creating is being designed with maximum flexibility so that people who may want to do it differently, for people that may have a different value structure than us, for people that have a different idea of how it should be done, can take everything that we're doing and use it to launch a different project in a different way and to bring people that agree with that methodology and that idea and still use everything that we're creating to add to a global cooperative, a global collaborative of information and resources that will just continually expand and grow so that people have even more options, which from our perspective is essential because we already said that what we really want to do is we want to make it easy enough, we want to make it attractive enough, and we want to make it affordable enough. And to reach those three, to achieve those three goals, then this means that we want as much diversity as possible. And so we're here to build the foundation and give it away for free and then to work with everybody who wants to build diverse versions of that to increase the global archive, the in, increase the global information hub to build even more teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities around the world. So there's other options, as many options as possible to reflect the diversity that is humanity and what people's needs, wants, and desires are in a way that works for them while still working towards the highest good of all and moving in a positive direction for everyone. So the format of these uh, videos is always the same. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a bullet point list and there's not too many bullet points this time but we accomplished some huge things in this, this last week so I'll go through a quick bullet point list of everything that we've accomplished and then I will come back around and I'll talk in depth and in detail about all those things, what's happening behind the scenes um, and uh, and we'll just explore it. So without further ado, let me jump into those details. In the last week, we finished the Education Portal Redesign, which is huge, uh, huge. We're working on a relative space lesson plan, which is done, and we're now working on the images, really working on finishing up the images, and with a little bit of luck, we'll actually finish that lesson plan this week and start moving on to the next lesson plan, which is Matter. Uh, and then we are continuing the research on the images for the social sciences, and we're putting a call out for help. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Also in the last week, we added another 25 more food forest plants have been added to the food forest page, which I think is bringing us, I'm pretty sure that brings us solidly over the 400 mark for uh, amazing plants that we have researched. And um, also in food infrastructure, we have uh, finished in 3D, We've added some cinder block details and the retaining wall details have been done, added in 3D. We've moved up the uh, ground in 3D and so we're just moving forward on the 3D details of all the food infrastructure, highest good food infrastructure. And then uh, last but not least, uh, we did an immense amount 
of work on the Sago Center, which I will share with you in a moment, um, which included a second floor being moved, which you can imagine moving the whole an entire floor down by over a foot in a circular and a spherical structure is a pretty big deal, thanks to the work of Devin Porter on that. And then uh, our team also has started doing space planning on that, on the Sago Center. And so we started adding in furniture and we've started doing the bathrooms and these kinds of deals, putting in these, these uh, little specifics um, with the hope to get the majority of all this 3D work done to really put the wraps on this ooh, within the next few weeks. And then we're gonna start working with, the, uh, with P2S Engineering. So on uh, the final details that, that need to be completed with that. So I'll talk more about that in a second, though. So that's really our update in this last week. Um, not a lot of items, but huge progress on the items that we did move forward on. And specifically, probably the biggest one of those. And now, thanks to the magic of technology, uh, I can actually show you what this looks like. The biggest one of those is the Education Portal redesign. And so if you look at what I'm showing you here, this image, you can actually see uh, what we did is we've added now icons that link to all of the key pages of the education program. And when you click on each one of those icons, it'll take you to the page. And now we have icons in each of those pages as well where you click on it and it shows you exactly where to go to get the most important information just by looking at the icons. And so redesigning this education open source portal has been a huge task. We invite you to check it out on the website. Um, the education program for one community is a collection of, or a collaboration of, man, we probably had 10 or 15 different people who have been working on this, really putting a lot of effort. It is the total, uh, the sum of hundreds, if well over uh, thousands of hours of work. And so redesigning this portal meant that we not only redesigned each of the, end, no, the, the actual entry point into it and the menus on the website for accessing everything in here, but also redesigning every single page, all of the major pages for the uh, every component of the Education for Life program, and then also going in there and designing, starting out, building out all the pages for all the pieces that aren't done yet. And so, um, which, is, which is a lot. I mean, there's still a lot that we're still working on. So we designed all those additional pages as well so that we could link to those and then we could show exactly what is done. So now if you run into a page that isn't complete, it says, hey, this page is still being worked on. We're looking for somebody to help us. If you're a creative person, if you're just an out-of-the-box thinker, an intelligent person, somebody who really uh, likes to apply themselves to complex tax, tasks, loves to do research, image research, that kind of stuff, we're looking for people. If you're a teacher, we are looking for people to help us finish this program because we're putting together 30 different, we've got over 35 different lesson plans that we are working on right now that we've got sketched out. And so we know exactly what needs to be done. It's just an immense amount of work. So we're looking for people to help us out with those. And the redesign of the education portal really um, brought all this together. Like now we have the complete website infrastructures in place. So as we continue to design each one of these, the first ones took the most amount of time. And as we continue to design each one of these lesson plans, as we continue to fill out the different um, subject molecules, which we finished the math molecule, and you can see that I reported on a couple weeks ago, an immense amount of work and a beautiful and super useful tool that uh, can be applied right now. It's already up on the website as open source content. Well, now that we've got the initial infrastructure in and the links and all this stuff, it's going to take us a fraction of the time to get additional ones up but still an immense amount of time creating the actual lesson plans. And if you want to see what that looks like, take a look at this. What you see right here is our relative space lesson plan in progress. And these are snapshots of the Google Doc where we're working on this. And what it shows is uh, just the amount of work that has to be done as far as finding images. And then we're bullet pointing out all of the different education level so that we have something that's easy for a pre for a kindergartner to do all the way up to a challenging exercise for a college student or an adult with a college education <coughs> excuse me and so what you can see is this is just a snapshot of one of these lesson plans in progress and we've gotten so good at defining exactly what it is that we want to create that you can see that you know we break it down into the different areas. You've got the arts and the vocations, and then we've got math, and then we've got English, and we've got science, and we've got social sciences. All of these different areas are covered in each lesson plan. And so the idea, which I've talked about in other blogs, but I'll talk about it again because each one of these is really meant to be a standalone experience. 
The idea with each one of these lesson plans is to provide a lesson plan that can be used in any environment. It can be used in a home and schooling environment. It can be used in a, a traditional schooling environment. It can be used in a private schooling or charter schooling environment. Or it could just be used in any environment where you want to create a more interesting learning environment where you like to just kind of spice it up and also to be used with any age. And the reason why they're designed so that they can be used with any age is because we believe that education should be as flexible as a student. And we believe that a student that excels in an area shouldn't be limited by the education that's being taught just to that grade level. We believe that it's possible, and we are creating a living example of this, to teach to every age level and to provide an, a structure so that a student that just totally excels in a, in a, in a subject can be allowed to blossom within that area. And a student that's really challenged in the subject has fun and engaging, hands-on ways to learn that subject that are relevant, that are interesting, they're fun, they're applicable, they're all the way that, well, they're the way that most adults like to learn, by doing, by actually seeing the results of what it is that you're working on and seeing how it applies. And so the whole lesson plan, and you'll see this if you go and you visit now, one of the things that we did in recreating the open source portal is we created a how to use this program page. And the how to use this program page talks about each one of the areas and how it can be used individually or how it could be used in conjunction with all of the other aspects of the program. So you could take the strategies of being, which is great strategies for teachers, learners, communicators, and leaders, and you could use that just as a standalone piece that could be applied in any environment. It doesn't even have to be an educational environment. It could be a work environment. It could be a home environment. You could take the strategies of, of teaching or the great teaching, the, uh, teaching tools and learning toys section, and you could use that by yourself just to add into any existing education program. You could take the same thing with the strategies of learning, the different learning strategies. They're designed to be applied to multiple subjects simultaneously, or you could use them just with an individual subject. And those came from studying the best and most interesting educational programs of the last hundred years. Waldorf, Montessori, Study Tech, um, uh, ORF, uh, Regio, the Eight Intelligences, the um, Bloom's Taxonomy. All of these different educational models were studied and then we were looked at and then we also talked to kids and we said, and, and students that, had, that were recent graduates of high schools that really had unique education programs, we said, well, what did you like best? What was your favorite class? What was the part of this that was most exciting to you? Like, what made it different? And through that, we created this combination of lesson plans, which we will constantly keep adding to. So anybody who has an idea for a lesson plan should send it, or for a learning strategy, rather, should send that to us so that we can take it and we can make it even better. It's meant to be an ongoing global collaborative. And so the point is, is those can be used in isolation. Same thing with the subject molecules. And we finished math, as I said, you can take a look at that. We're working on social sciences right now, which is what I said was another one thing. We're continuing the research for that. I would say we're about 50% done with the research that we need to do as far as finding all the images for the social sciences, maybe a little more, maybe 60% done. And so as we continue to work through that, finding all the images like those pictures that I showed you for the light, the uh, linear space lesson plan, we're creating a whole visual representation of the entire subject of social sciences, covering everything from preschool to college level, and then actual, uh, actual professions are represented on there as well. And the idea with that is so that people can use that tool right now. And you can do this for math if you want to. You could use that tool to look at where you are, wherever you are in the subject of math, whether you're just new to math or you've been studying math for years, you're a college student in math, you could look at that and say, hey, which one of these things have I, do I feel I have a solid grasp on? And then you could also choose a profession that you were working towards and say, well, this is the area that I'm going for. And you could look at it and say, okay, these are the skill sets, all the skill sets to be really an expert in the field of math. And what, how many of these have accomplished them? Where am I going? Then you can do the research necessary to identify which skills you need to fill that in. Select those on the math molecule and say, these are the areas that I need to focus on. And it literally gives you a simple visual representation, a non-linear representation. So you can say, well, I'm strong in this. I'm not very strong in this. I want to focus on these different areas. I'm going to challenge myself with this. And so within the education model that we're creating, 
we're creating all the tools to do that also. And so um, as, the, uh, as the image research continues on that, you'll see that for social sciences and then for science and then you're going to see it for English and you're going to see it for everything, including values, which is going to cover the diversity of human values. And then people can choose the ones that they want to focus on. Maybe you want to focus on love. Maybe you want to focus on honor. Maybe you want to focus on integrity. Maybe you want to focus on world change. Maybe you want to focus on sustainability. Maybe you want to focus on whatever your value is. Compassion, empathy, something like whatever it is. Friendship. All these values are going to be represented on there. and People can choose the ones that they think are important. X out the ones that maybe they don't want to focus on. Or say, hey, I have a good solid grasp on this. And so we're creating all of these to be standalone tools that can be used in any educational environment with any age. It is phenomenal and really beautiful. And it's an immense amount of work. Like I said, it's thousands of hours of work have already gone into it. And we're looking for other people. If you or someone you know uh, would like to contribute to that, uh, we would love people to help us out and do research. We've got a great structure in place. And so we could plug you right into that structure and get you up to speed helping us out to continue to develop this program and to make it even better. And so, exciting stuff. It's been a huge week for the education program. We've done an immense amount of work. And, um, yeah, check out that open source portal. Take a look at what it is that we've created. And, um, and yeah, click around. See, see the immense amount of work and visit the different pages. And um, if you have any ideas or anything, every single page has a suggestions link on it. Click on that. Share with us the page that you have a suggestion for or something that you think should be added. And in so doing, you help us make it better. And that's the whole point. The whole program is designed to be an ongoing, indefinite, global collaborative and a global collaboration. And the pages that we've designed and this new portal and everything that we've done is designed for infinite expansion and growth. The uh, how to use this program page, which I, which I talked about, also tells you where we're going with it. Like it outlines what you can expect from the open source and free shared content and the evolution of the program over time, each section, like, hey, here's how to use this section by itself, here's how you can expect it to evolve, and here's how to use it in conjunction with the rest of the complete program to have everything that you need to ultimately run and start your own school. And that's where we're going also, which we will be teaching people, will be open source sharing and free sharing, the whole process of licensing and everything that's necessary. If somebody wanted to start a community-based school or a home-based school or something like that, uh, our process of setting that up we're going to open source share and free share all that as well so that people have a step-by-step do-it-yourself guide on what's necessary as far as state regulations and who you need to talk to and all that stuff. And so it's super cool. So um, yeah, so that completes education. Um, on food, I said that we got 24 more food forest plants added. If you take a look here, you can see what, here's two examples, just two examples of what they, are, what they are. I've talked about this now through the magic of technology and learning new skills. I can actually show you pictures of this kind of stuff so you can see it without going to the website or you can just uh, visit the link there that tells you where to go and check it out on the website as well. And so what you see here is a, uh, you see the descriptions, you see that we have placements on here and then we have the cultural considerations, planting guidelines, and then a link to more information. All of this is going to expand over time. So once we move on to the property, we'll be adding a lot more details, actually two more layers of pages for every single one of these plants, which will include everything from um, how to cook them and additional planting details and all the different things that we run into as far as maintenance, especially within the indoor structures. Now, the food force is all the outdoor stuff. So as we start learning like, hey, these companion plants did really well and that kind of stuff, we'll share all of that as part of these plants. And so as part of our open source content, we'll just continue to expand the information and details that you see on the plants saying, okay, well, you know, here's where what grows well with this, and these are the problems that we ran into, and oh, we need to add more drainage, and then there'll be tutorials for all that stuff, all the different elements of maintenance and upkeep and, um, and continued health and happiness of plants and everything that we learn. And then we'll just continue to expand the list as well with everything that we plant through our open source botanical garden model. And we talked about accessioning in the past and all this stuff, like how to run an open source botanical garden so that you can join the, the global collaborative as well and share your information 
with us and the world on what it is that you've learned and take everything that we've done and apply that. And then we can, once again, we can start working together as a human species to improve this planet for everybody. And so, and you might ask the question like, well, you know, where do people find the time to do all this? It's a big part of what it is that we're creating. You know, everybody on our team is an unpaid volunteer. And so right now we're finding the time in between our jobs. We're finding the time in between our busy lives. We're finding the time in between our commute to work and our taking our kids to school and all that kind of stuff. And so in the one community environment, it's all designed to create more free time to do the things that you want to do and to contribute to stuff like this because it centralizes and localizes everything because you're growing your own food and eliminates the commute and it frees up all this this time and energy to do the things that people want to do eliminates the financial worry and um, frees people and so that's where people find the time the whole model is designed to give people that experience so that people can come and visit and experience it more importantly so that people can build it and duplicate it themselves so one community is designed to grow ultimately to a group of over 2,000 full-time residents working on highest good solutions for humanity, working on open source and free sharing everything that people need to duplicate everything that is one community and set up additional teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities around the world. And so as additional cities and villages and communities come online and connect in with us, sharing for the highest good of all, doing it differently, doing it their own way, evolving everything that we've done, that evolution, all this framework, all this thing, everything that we're building is meant to be the global knowledge base. It's the hub for the global knowledge base so people can access that information. It's also meant to be the marketing engine to help promote other highest good of all organizations like our partners at Seed Savers and all of our partners, this kind of deal. Everybody that's helping at this point and will help in the future and all these other communities to say, hey, if you want to visit another version of this, this is what this one's all about. This is what this one's all about. So we can cross promote each other and help support people that are working together for the highest good of all and making a difference in the world. And so when people say, well, where's the time going to come from? The whole model addresses that. And you can take a look at this. I said a few weeks ago that, um, or yeah, it was two or three weeks ago, we're slowly but surely updating all of our open source hubs. Look at the highest good society. Hub. Take a look at the Highest Good Society Hub because that is really about the social architecture and the social model that if people wanted to adopt it with the Highest Good Business Model and the Highest Good Food and the Highest Good Energy Infrastructure and the Highest Good Housing, all these things put together are meant to reduce people's overhead, their living expenses, and what it costs to exist so much and then to create an actual business model that provides ongoing revenue for people through the whole ecotourism and sharing model, sharing what is one community, sharing what is their model, but sharing this whole idea of a teacher demonstration, community, village, city, that idea by sharing it and inviting people to come and visit, the more they share, the more revenue that generates because you could share this for less than the price or comparable to the cost of staying at a Best Western or just a traditional hotel, but provide so much more value in what it is that we're doing because the complete model that is one community and so the whole idea here is we want to teach people how to do that we want to teach people how to share that and set people free and set people free financially we want to set people free as far as their time is concerned we want to provide a higher quality of education than is available anywhere else we want to provide a higher quality of food than is available anywhere else we want to teach people how to apply that in the complete model or in just even as individual components but the complete model provides the necessary freedom, financial freedom, time freedom, etc., for those that want to, to contribute to this global cooperative for the highest good of all, to become a part of world change with us, and um, to really give something back to humanity. And so, and we're, we built the infrastructure to do that. That's what the whole social architecture is about. That's what the whole highest good education model is about. That's what all of it, all the highest good components, food, energy, stewardship, all these things, and the infrastructure that we're building on the website already and is already in place and we continue to develop and expand is there so we can plug in more and more information and create like the Wikipedia of do-it-yourself um, guides to living an amazing life that is good for you, it's good for the planet, it's good for your community, it's good for the economy, it's good for everything. 
It supports, it's completely supportive. And that's why we talk about creating a new world paradigm. We have the ability right now to create a world that works for everybody. The technology exists and the number of people that are interested in doing this already exists too because it doesn't require everybody. We can create a world that works for everybody with a very small percentage of this population really wanting it. People like our team and our organization that enjoy doing this stuff, creating the open source and free shared blueprints for people that might not enjoy doing this stuff so much so that we can free share and give it away and still get those folks going and up and running and doing the parts that they love more which might just be living the lifestyle, sharing the lifestyle, or maybe just contributing the food infrastructure, maybe just contributing to the housing aspect or developing this piece or that piece and just sharing that, or maybe not sharing at all, maybe just being another living representation of awesome, <laughs> of people that are happy and fulfilled and no longer in financial debt, that are not are free, you know, that have more time to do the things that they care about, that are raising kids that have a stellar education and are ready to be the next ambassadors to the future, the leaders in the next generation, taking our world to places that we really can't even fathom from where we are right now because the foundations that we're building have the potential to create something so much grander than anything we've ever imagined. And so we're here to make that happen. And so anyway, the food forest plants and the uh, open source botanical garden model two small pieces, but we did a lot of great work on that. Now with this food forest plant stuff, I talked about how um, we added cinder blocks and retaining walls, and you can see this, just here's one quick picture of what that looks like, and uh, it's just adding in more cinder blocks, we're replacing the retaining walls, we're getting into more detail of what this is gonna look like so that when it's done, we can hand people a complete 3D model of our food infrastructure that people want to, who wanna modify it have all the blueprints and plans that they need to to do this. This includes, you know, the CAD files that are necessary. This includes the SketchUp files so as everything's in 3D and it will include all of the blueprints as well as our entire process of getting everything permitted and everything by it through the county and making sure that everything is safe. All that stuff, everything that you need to be able to walk in and start having a conversation with somebody about building this and getting getting your necessary permitting and buying all of your materials and all of those details. And so in this last week, we finished up the um, cinder block and the retaining wall details. Are at, we added a bunch of those in 3D, which seems like a small thing. A lot of people don't realize like just raising the floor up and doing a few of these differences and tweaks because we're learning a lot of new skills in the process. That was three hours. Adding in the cinder blocks and learning how to do that, which will now go much faster, was a total with, with the raising it up. It was like just 12 hours just working on just that piece. And so this is, a, if anything, we see it as a testament to the value of what it is that we're creating because our project is in the tens of thousands of hours of work and development have been put in. Go look at our blog. Go check out the blog, one uh, community blog, and look at our weekly updates and just scroll back. You can see this is number 43. You can go back you know, for weeks and weeks. And when you get to the end of 43, that's just when we start doing video updates. You can go back even farther on the written updates and you can see all the different things that we've got in the fire and everything that's been developing and you know just the steps of us moving forward and getting it done and taking care of business and so um, yeah so it's cool to see the 3D work that we've got done now and the uh, uh, and the food infrastructure is continuing to move forward so and last but not least for this last week I said that we made ridiculous progress on the Sago Center and uh, a lot of that was thanks to the help of Devin Porter he uh, took on the task of moving our second floor in the Sego Center to where it needed to be. When we designed the whole thing in 3D, we found out that we had a floor conflict. Our floor was running and conflicting with our windows in the geodesic dome, and you can't move those windows. And so we've been resisting going through the process of fixing that. And now what you can see is... Um, that it's all lined up with the windows. So if you look at this image here, what you can see is that the floor is lined up with the with the uh, with the windows now, and that required a complete redesign of the stairs and fixing all of those details. And then also we started doing space planning. And so in these cutaways, another thing that Devin was able to do for us was add in the second layer of the the uh, the walls, which is something we hadn't done yet. So we didn't have 
the actual thickness of the dome walls, which is five and five and something, three quarters inches. And then you can add to that if you want to do extra insulation on these. And so he added those details in. And meanwhile, uh, our team started doing space planning, started adding in the furniture, started adding in the, uh, the, started working on the bathrooms, but mainly working on the furniture, adding in the closet doors, adding in doors, that kind of stuff. And so um, that's what we're working on right now. And over the next week, uh, we will continue that whole process and um, hopefully get the rest of the furniture in. I think we're going to get the rest of the furniture in in this next week. And then we're going to start working on the entryway details for the, the first and second floor into the living dome. And so for those that don't know, the Sago Center is a duplicable city hub. And so the purpose of the duplicable city hub is to build a city center that has dining for 150 people at a time, that can do laundry for 300 people, at a time uh, or can service 300 people's laundry needs as well uh, and provides a recreational space that has the ability to, I guess a collective, the building has the ability to replace individual kitchens, replace individual dining rooms, replace uh, individual uh, living rooms and recreational spaces because you have these beautiful collective collaborative spaces that you can share instead and that, that are, um, designed for coming together as groups and sharing space. And then you have all these additional individual spaces that are built within the community model. And once again, this is something that some people might not agree with, but from a sustainability standpoint and from a saving resources standpoint, we believe that it makes a lot more sense to put the collective energy into creating a truly beautiful, amazing shared space that will, is, will be considered far superior, if you look at this design, be far superior to what almost anybody, except unless you're a multi, multi-millionaire building more space than you probably need, it would be considered by most people to be superior to anything that you could build uh, individually. And so you have access to that 24-7. It's walking distance from your home. And then you have your private space, your home, where you can go to get away from everything. And then you have all these other private spaces that are around the property, which is surrounded by open private space, you know, forest land, and showing that you can live densely but artistically. You can live densely but not feel like you're living densely because you have huge open spaces surrounding you. you know, right now people are living in apartment complexes. People are living in people are living in just regular neighborhoods where they're packed in with homes side by side. What if we opened up all that space? And we said, okay, well we can still put these homes in a configuration where it doesn't take up a lot of space, but we have all this free space to be able to roam and to be able to explore and to be able to enjoy nature. You know, and then also designing this as a complete community model that can also be imprinted or imported or adapted to community environments too, like some of the amazing stuff that they're doing in Oregon right now by tearing down walls in residential neighborhoods and creating community spaces instead of having every lot partitioned off. And so all of this stuff is, uh, is, is supported by the Sego Center. And so in our process, thanks to Devin Porter, doing his help with that and also thanks to our team working on all of the different uh, furniture details what we're doing is we're defining a building that will be able to replace all those things for people and it will also um, function as a city center where you could then build any one of the seven sustainable village models around this city center if you wanted to or you wouldn't have to you could build the sustainable village models by themselves if you wanted to also but this is meant to really cater to uh, a different demographic if it needed to, and that it could be built as a standalone building pretty much anywhere in the world, and then function as a revenue producing uh, space or function as a living space while any of the other complete village models were developed around that. And so, big movement on that. Also, uh, we're in the process, and you can see here, here's a picture, we're in the process of uh, updating the CAD now to represent or to represent to reflect all the changes that we needed to make in 3D so once we put everything in 3D we started realizing whoa alright all these details are in 3D we need to move this around we need to do this and we forgot that and as we started making all of our changes then we realized whoa hey you know that 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 tree now we need to update all the CAD as well because we started in 2D and there were some things that we just couldn't see until we saw it in 3D and so on that picture here um, you can see actually that 
you can see the difference in the dining room there that has been made. And you see the beginnings happening as far as these changeovers, thanks to the work of Carl Harris, as he's taking everything we've been doing, working on together as a group in 3D, and he's starting to transfer it over to the CAD and make those differences and make those changes uh, there so that they all line up and so that everything's the same. And once all that's done, then we're finally ready to go back to our team at P2S Engineering and they'll take on mechanical, electrical, and plumbing and start bringing this thing together and uh, hopefully get us to building plans here in not too long. And so, of course, those will all be plans that will be open source and free sharing as well. You know, and then people have that foundation to be able to take something like this and either build it exactly the way that we've, we've designed it or to modify it in a way that works best for you because once we've got all these files done, once we've got the CAD files done, once we've got all everything that needs to be completed, once it's finished, then we'll open source and free share those details so that other people have all those files and they can modify them the way that they want and run with it in a different direction if they want to. So that's our update. That's what we've accomplished in the last week. And uh, I will say what I always say at the end of these videos, if you're somebody that would like to join our team, if you're somebody that would like to get involved, if you're somebody that would like to be a part of World Change with us, the doors are wide open. We're always looking for people to participate in all the different aspects of the project. And um, if you've got skills that you think would be applicable, contact us, get a hold of us, let us know that you'd like to help, fill out one of our short partner applications or consultant applications, or join us as a member of the team. We're always looking for satellite members. We're always looking for pioneers. You know, there's openings for these positions. If you're somebody that would like to become a part of the team right now and then be one of the people to move onto the property and actually build everything that we're talking about and to live as a member of one community, uh, that's, that's the pioneer team. We're the people that are gonna be moving to that property and we're gonna be actually building everything that you see here, everything that we're developing and all these details right now. Now, of course, the number one way that anybody can help us, and we say this every week, if you know somebody, you know, we're a non-501c3 nonprofit organization, it's the end of the year. Uh, if you know somebody that could help with funding, we're seeking someone to either invest in one community or to donate to one community to help us get the property off the market. That's really the number one thing that could help us right now would be getting the property off the market. If we could get the property off the market, we could share the details of the location which would be huge. It would allow people to understand where it is that we're going to be living, to see the space, which is mind-blowingly beautiful. And, uh, and a lot of people are waiting on that. You know, they don't, to join our team without knowing exactly where the location is, and we don't share that until the second interview. It's, you know, that takes a lot of faith and a real commitment to world change. And so we would love to share the details of the property, and then we would be able to run a crowdfunding campaign and a lot of things that are really waiting on that specific element. Meantime, just keep checking off our action items, doing what needs to be done to build anyway. But if you know somebody, please, and even if you don't know anybody, share what it is that we're doing. The biggest thing that you can do to help us is to share what it is that we're doing. The second biggest thing that you could do to help us, other than joining the team, of course, getting involved that way, would be to subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, mainly so that uh, what it is that we're doing just stays at the forefront of your consciousness so that uh, when you see our, our blogs like this posted, that you think about us, hopefully positively, and go, oh, wow, cool, one community is still rocking along. Look at what they're doing. And, uh, and then if, if that person that we're looking for or that group that we're looking for that could really fund one community and make a big difference comes across your path, you'd be thinking about us, you know, or sharing it with somebody. You never know who you know. And so, um, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, on uh, One Community Fans or on One Community Updates. Also check us out on Twitter. Uh, we're on Twitter and really if you go to our website you can see that we are on all of the social media sites. So you can join us in whatever way works best for you. Just check us out. And like I said, uh, sharing our stuff on social media is hugely helpful. So if you love our education portal, if you like those kinds of details on what it is that we're doing, share that stuff. We pay attention to what's getting shared because it's an indicator to us of what people like the most and what we're doing right. So if there's some part of our project that you enjoy, like it on Facebook, share it, go to our One Community Updates page or our One Community Fans page and like the pages that you like, like the updates that you like, like clicking on those things and liking those and going through and doing that, we know like, oh, okay, this is something. Join us on our One Community uh, Facebook group, which is more of where the conversation happens and people can contribute resources there 
and contribute ideas there. So check that out also. And uh, we'd love to have your help. We'd love to have you join the conversation. And as always, thank you for the emails. Thank you for the messages we get on Facebook. Thank you for all that stuff. Thank you for following our project. The messages we get on YouTube, we respond to every single one. And so um, we're just grateful for all the support that we get. We're grateful for all the suggestions we get. And uh, we definitely feel the love. So with that, I will sign off. Creating a new world paradigm. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening right now. If you want to get involved, join us. Update number 43, covering our progress for the week of December 16th, 2013. And uh, my next check-in will be in the new year. So thanks as always. Bye.